We've put together an epic seven-day itinerary using the seven-day Japan Rail Pass. This could be done on a seven-day visit to Japan, however, we recommend putting days before and after this route to explore Tokyo. We've tailored this itinerary to include the top destinations and pulled from our experience of over 30 years visiting Japan. This video will include a JR Pass route starting and ending in Tokyo. We'll share sites to see in Kyoto, Osaka, Nara, Miyajima, and Hiroshima. Later, in a separate video, we'll share sample itineraries for Tokyo, as that's just too much to include in one video. Even if you will visit Japan for more than seven days, you can still purchase the seven-day JR Pass to use on this suggested route. We'll link where you can get it down below. You don't need your JR Pass to cover every single day of your Japan trip, it's most important to have the pass for times when you will be moving rapidly from city to city or covering long distances. If necessary, you can purchase transportation from the airport into Tokyo separate from your pass. And here's a pro tip, make sure you have the Japan Travel NaviTime app installed on your phone. With this app, you will be able to filter to show only routes that include the JR Pass. But sometimes we opt to separately pay for a train if a non-JR train, let's say, will get there 20 or 30 minutes faster. Also, make sure you have the Google Maps app installed on your phone if you don't already, as we will be linking to some routes in the description below. For instance, how to get from one temple to the next. Here's a pro tip, either bring along a blank notebook or get a Japanese stamp book as there will be lots of places along your JR route to collect stamps. Day 1, Tokyo to Kyoto, Tokaido Shinkansen Line. Take the morning Hikari Shinkansen train. As mentioned, you will be taking the Tokaido Shinkansen Line from Tokyo to Kyoto Station. And there are three Shinkansens that travel on it. The first is the Nozomi, which is currently not included in the JR Pass, so that is not an option. The second is the Hikari Shinkansen, which will get you to Kyoto in about 2 hours and 40 minutes. The third option is the Kodama Shinkansen, and that will take about 4 hours because it stops at every station. So make sure you take the Hikari Shinkansen. When you arrive in Kyoto, check into your accommodation, and if you cannot leave your luggage there, leave your luggage at a locker at the Kyoto station. Have lunch and then head to Kiyomizadera Temple, aka the Pure Water Temple. It's the most iconic in Kyoto and sits atop a hill with stunning views. And don't forget to bring your stamp book. You may see people lining up at shrines to get stamps, but these are not the free variety. Instead, these are some intricately designed stamps, including calligraphy by a monk. And you usually have to pay between 3 to 500 yen to get one of these stamps. And you should have a special stamp book called a Goshuincho. And the stamps are called Goshuin? That's correct. Take your time here to enjoy the natural beauty and take some photos. You can drink from the Otawa waterfall, which is said to have healing properties. This is the pure water we mentioned. After exiting the temple, walk down either Sanenzaka or Nanenzaka streets. These are Instagram worthy places that have a lot of restaurants and souvenir shops. Then continue walking down to the Gion district or take a taxi to get there. Since it's the evening time, you may have a chance at spotting a maiko or a geisha. This is also the perfect setting to participate in a traditional tea ceremony. If you want to do something like that, it's best to pre-book and we'll leave some options of various experiences in the description below. You may want to wander the ancient streets, then have dinner at nearby Pontocho or along the Kamo River. Many restaurants have seating overlooking the river. There are tons of options, including bars, sushi, and izakayas. Izakayas are one of our favorite, especially if going out with a group of friends. You can get grilled food such as yakitori, other small side dishes, and drink beer if you're into that. But it can get smoky inside an izakaya. Day two, explore Kyoto, then on your way to Osaka. Check out of your accommodation, and then to lighten your load, leave your luggage at the Kyoto station. After breakfast, head to Kinkakuji, the Golden Temple. If it's super hot that day, there are a number of soft serve ice cream places located outside the gate, or soft cream. After visiting Kinkakuji, walk along the road for 20 minutes to Rianji, or you could take a taxi. While famous for the Zen Rock Garden, that's not all there is to see, so take your time exploring. Next, take the train or a taxi to Arashiyama. We'll link to some maps in the description below. Have a late lunch in Arashiyama as there are plenty of food options there. Then you can visit the Bamboo Forest. 
But keep in mind that this iconic place is not as serene as you may think from pictures. There's going to be a crowd of tourists there. But don't worry, after visiting the bamboo forest, there are plenty of other gorgeous places to wander around. For instance, if you want to see another temple, right next to the bamboo forest is Tenryoji, which is a 14th century temple and a world heritage site. Or just get lost and wander around. For instance, go over the Togetsukyo River where you will find more beautiful parks and just beautiful scenery everywhere. And before it gets dark, it will be time to head back to Kyoto Station. Don't forget to get your luggage from the locker. <laughs> From Kyoto Station to Shin Osaka, it's a 15 minute ride on either the Kodama or the Hikari Shinkansen. But of note, after 7.36 p.m., there isn't another Shinkansen until after 11 p.m. So you will need to take a rapid train, but those are pretty quick and they'll get you there in about 35 minutes. Check into your accommodation in Osaka and have dinner. Day three, Osaka either Universal Studios Japan or Kaiokan. On this third day, you could spend the day at Universal Studios Japan, which includes Super Nintendo World, or you could visit the Kaiokan Aquarium. If you are going to Universal Studios, we recommend getting there one and a half hours before the park opens. This is because the park may open one hour before technical opening time, like it did when we visited. Keep in mind that Super Nintendo World is extremely popular, and just because you buy a ticket for Universal Studios does not guarantee that you will be able to enter Super Nintendo World. So be sure to watch our previous videos with hacks for visiting Super Nintendo World. And we'll leave a link below where you can purchase your tickets. If not visiting Universal Studios, then Kaiyukan is the best aquarium we've ever visited. Some of the creatures include whale sharks and these gigantic spider crabs. <laughs> They're even bigger than us. And right outside is the Legoland Discovery Center, which is great if you have kids. And next to that is Temple Zone, where they have one of the largest Ferris wheels in the world at 112 meters high and 100 meters in diameter. For dinner, head to the Dotonbori area where you can see the famous Glico Man sign. Here you will encounter street performers and just a very lively scene with a lot of options for food. We recommend trying takoyaki, which are these little battered balls with octopus and usually ginger. And make sure you also try okonomiyaki, which uses similar ingredients, but also usually with a combination of various seafoods and really anything. And both are super delicious, must try. But they're not gluten free. For us, since we have young kids, we'd probably skip dinner at Danton Buri and just eat at Universal City Walk and call it a night. Day four, day trip from Osaka to Nara. Nara is a fascinating city and an absolute must see. It was once the capital of Japan and has some of the most amazing structures in the world. Get off the train at Kintetsu Nara Station and you can get a free map there too. Then head straight to Nakatani Do Mochi. Here, they make mochi fresh every day the old-fashioned way using their hands in this huge wooden mallet. It is quite a show. <laughs> so make sure you get some fresh mochi and then get some extra to take with you into Nara Park as you might get hungry. Enter the Deer Park or Nara Park. There will be lots of friendly deer looking for food for you and maybe digging in your back pocket. Although they appear friendly, please keep in mind that these are wild animals and take caution, especially if you have young children with you. Next, visit Todaiji and simply put, the gate and the temple itself are just awesome. The temple is the largest wooden structure in the world and it's also a world heritage site. Inside the temple houses the world's largest bronze statue of Buddha standing at over 15 meters tall. Inside the main hall, there is a pillar with a hole at the base. That hole is said to be the size of the nostril of the Buddha statue. And it is said that if you can crawl through it, you will reach enlightenment or at least get some good fortune. In Nara Park, there are a variety of restaurants, mostly Japanese, and some of them you can actually pay using a vending machine. If you want to see more temples, head to Kasuga Taisha Shrine. Or if you want to see one of the most beautiful gardens, head to Isuen Garden. Just absolute beautiful scenery everywhere. Then return by train to Osaka to have dinner in either Dotonbori or the Namba area. Spend the night in Osaka. Day five, Osaka to Miyajima. On day five, it's time to head from Osaka to Miyajima Island via Hiroshima. If you appreciate Hello Kitty and Sanrio, you'll want to take the 11.37 a.m. Hello Kitty Shinkansen train from Shin Osaka to Hiroshima. There is one Hello Kitty Shinkansen train which travels on the Sanyo Shinkansen line. 
We'll link timetables and more information in the description box. The Hello Kitty train is included in the JR Pass. However, it's going to be closed for maintenance from May 8th through June 8th, 2023. But not to fret, there are plenty of other not-so-cute trains that run the Sanyo Shinkansen line. Upon arrival at Hiroshima Station, switch trains to the JR Sanyo line to Miyajimaguchi Station. From here, walk about 10 minutes to the JR Miyajima Ferry. Then the ferry ride is about 10 minutes to Miyajima Island, and that is included with your JR Pass. We recommend booking a ryokan, which is a traditional type of Japanese inn that's been around for centuries. If you want a real authentic experience, choose a ryokan where you will sleep on futons on the tatami floor. Try to choose one that will include a traditional Japanese meal known as a kaiseki, which is a multi-course feast made with seasonal ingredients and local ingredients as well. When we stayed in a ryokan, we each got half of a grape as part of our dessert. Just half. But it was delicious. If you have young kids like we do, you might want to skip the Ryokan experience. It requires a lot of patience for the multi-course meal, and some of them do have age restrictions. But there are plenty of other types of accommodations on Miyajima Island. And now that you are settled into your accommodation, head over to Itsukushima Shrine. After taking photos with the famous Tori, you can walk around and get chased once more by deer. Then take the cable car up to Mount Mizen, or if you're up to it, you can trek it. We did that years ago, and by the time we were at the top, we were just completely drenched in sweat. However, at the top, it is magnificent views if the weather permits, and there are restaurants and a temple where it is said that the eternal flame has been burning for over 1,200 years. Then head back down the hill and visit Itsukushima Shrine again for sunset. Have dinner at your ryokan or you can go to Omote Sando Street or near the Itsukushima Shrine, there are also restaurants. Day six, Hiroshima Peace Park Museum. After breakfast, take the Miyajima Ferry back to Miyajima Guchi Station. From here, you will get on the JR Sanyo line to Shin Hakushima Station. At this point, we recommend that you pay 190 yen to take the tram that will take you very close to the Peace Memorial Museum. Hiroshima Peace Memorial Park is located in the center of Hiroshima and it is dedicated to promoting peace and remembering both the direct and indirect victims of the nuclear bombing that happened near the end of World War II. We recommend visiting the museum first, then the park, cenotaph for A-bomb victims, and finally the A-bomb dome. Of note, some parts of the museum can be disturbing and are not for the faint of heart but we still recommend that adults visit the museum. Just pace yourself and hurry through the parts that might be disturbing for you. In the park, you may find one of the peace bells to ring if it's available. Otherwise, you can offer a prayer of peace. Expect to spend around four hours here. Our kids are still quite young, so we would skip the museum. Instead, we would make paper cranes and visit the outdoor Children's Peace Monument. Hiroshima to Himeji to spend the night. Take a deep breath and take the Kodama or Sakura Shinkansen up to Himeji where you will spend the night. Check the times for the fastest trains as the Kodama could be twice as long. We recommend staying near Himeji Castle as it is also near Himeji Station. Day 7. Visit Himeji Castle then back to Tokyo. If you can, leave your luggage at your hotel when you check out. Spend the morning visiting Himeji Castle and the grounds. Built in the 17th century, Himeji Castle is a world heritage site with 83 structures and many call it the greatest castle in Japan. Himeji Castle is also known as Shirasagi-jo, which means the White Heron Castle. Due to its white plastered walls. The architecture is considered a masterpiece of design and function, and the main tower has a five-story structure made of wood. After lunch, collect your luggage and take the Hikari Shinkansen back up to Tokyo, which will get you there in about three hours and 31 minutes. You have until midnight when your JR Pass expires. And now that you're back in Tokyo, we hope you have a few more days to explore. This is a great time to buy duty-free items such as electronics. We'll make a separate video on this, but for now, we highly recommend you visit Yorobashi Camera. They will have something for everyone in your family including a huge selection of toys. We'll cover more of what to do in Tokyo in a separate video. We've been making a series of videos to help you travel with ease throughout Japan. If you haven't already, you might want to watch our guide to purchasing and using the JR Pass, or a video where we explain getting a pocket Wi-Fi or a SIM card to stay connected while in Japan. Please subscribe for future videos where we'll share more off the beaten path route, as well as some hidden gems of Japan.